don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am joined by a little guest. Hi. This is Dad, Brian. So Dad's going to be sat with me while I do today's mission inspiration project for August. So we'll turn over to the overhead camera and I'll show you what the prompts are for the month and then we'll get started in the journal. Okay, so this is the prompt sheet for the month of August 2021. So your colours for the month are sage, peach and plum. Your theme is perfect patterns. So as it says, they could be abstract, geometric, repeating patterns, natural patterns or made with human hands. So lots of scope for creating patterns there. Dad's looking at me blank, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you'll see, you'll see where we're going with this. Okay, so your ingredients in no particular order. So I've got tickets, fabric, a border, some lettering and lines. Okay, so because we've got perfect patterns or patterns, then you could use for the lines, all you had to do would be like a grid pattern like I've got in the background there. So you can incorporate your lines, or they could the lines could be a part of your border. So you could incorporate two of those ingredients into one. So if your border is made up of lines, you're killing two birds with one stone. No birds, birds were hurt in the making of this video. <laughs> so, lots of scope. That is your prompts. Obviously, I'm going to be working in my triangle journal, which we've already got the page open ready with the correct orientation and twist because obviously we've got a 90 degree turn on every page just to make it a little bit more interesting so the colors we've got sage peach and plum so i've plundered at the depths of my paint collection and a near enough sage color i've got which is the deco Art americana desert cactus which is almost a, a sagey color would you say yeah, I'd say, yeah. Like a grey-green. Grey-green, yeah. yeah. Peach. Desert dust. <laughs> Desert dust, yeah. So, peach. Don't have any peach paint. So, the nearest I can find is coral. So, that's called coral shell. Mm. So, that's near enough the right colour. Probably a bit more pinky. A little bit. More kind of... I don't know. It's almost a, a like a fluorescent, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. So, but anyway, that's the nearest I've got to Peach. And then, of course, Plum would jump into Dina Wakely Media for Fuchsia, which is, yeah, yeah. it's a plum colour. Plum it's not colour. really a fuchsia colour, is it? I would say not. No, I think she was plunging the depths of, um, scraping the bottom of the barrel for names on that one. A little bit lighter than Plum. More like an aubergine. Yeah. Or maybe aubergine's a bit darker. But anyway, so those three colours, I think, are near enough. Don't you? I certainly do. Right, okay, so. So for the patterns, it can be anything. So what I'm going to do is the easiest pattern that you can create. So I'm going to do a pattern with a series of circles. Dead easy. Yeah? So what we'll do is we'll work dark to light. Yeah? Yes? So because we're using acrylic paint, which are normally opaque, we can get away with putting a darker colour down with a lighter colour on top. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So, but looking at the ingredients, we've got fabric. So, while I was hunting around for bits and scraps of fabric, I found this. So this is some fabric, polka dot fabric, that we purchased to make some journals with. So this was done as they are bought as a fabric for a front cover of a journal that Ian made. This was, I think, used for the Poisoner's Handbook for our friend Amanda. Uh, and this is the scraps left over. And look at the colour. Sage. I know. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. So we're going to incorporate bits of the fabric onto the page as well. But I think we need to do that first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my scissors and I'm just going to cut some strips and they, it's backed with self-adhesive strip, which is really, really sticky. So I'm going to create my own um, washi tape strips using this fabric. 
and that washi tape is like tissue tape. It's like tissue paper. This is washi tape, look. Just explaining to Dad. So this is tape, but it's patterned paper. Patterned paper, yeah. yeah. And you can get it in whatever. <laughs> there's a big pile of it here, look, on, yeah. on my shelf that I've used for other projects. And there's different patterns, different sizes. So I'm going to create some fabric self-adhesive strips with the polka dots on just because. So we'll do... I'm going to do six, I think. So there's three there. I'm probably making a rod for my own back doing this because it'll be difficult to get the adhesive off the back once I've cut it. Unless I'm really lucky, which I never usually am. <laughs> so, how I many is that? Four. So, another two. So the reason I'm doing six is because that's two sets of three, and we always do things in sets of three. Odd numbers are more pleasing to the human eye than even. Which mm. is why when you're doing the garden, you always plant in odd numbers. Odd number. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that fabric can get put away. Just chuck that to one side. We don't need that. Right, now let's see if we can peel off the backing of this fabric washi tape now. I think it's going to probably be a bit difficult. So what I might have to do is... Is there a scalpel there, Dad? Can you see a cork with a scalpel on it? Ah, I've managed to get one off. There we go. That'll probably help me to get the back off. Ta. Let's put that there. Right, so, first piece. I'm going to stick down like that. So the second piece, just very carefully, if I just get, there you go, you see how easy that is, once you've got the edge of a knife. And then the other piece I'm going to put across there. And then just very gently ease the blade between the paper and the fabric. And that should just peel off. Dead easy like. And then we'll put that one across there, like that. And then the other piece, and then we'll, what we'll do is we'll put the other three pieces at 90 degree angles. One of the aesthetics of art journaling is that you try and avoid doing things in diagonals. Don't ask me why, it's just just the way it works. It just looks better. And if you do diagonals, and I'm using a triangle journal, it kind of flies in the, uh, the face of that, but it's still a square page. But it always looks better if you can try and do things at right angles. Now then, we've got one more piece somewhere. And I'm going to just cut one a little bit smaller. Are you tidying up? Well, yes. See, this is where I get it from. <laughs> <coughs> Always tidy your workspace as you go in. There we go. So I make that one a bit smaller. Now, because this is fabric. It's going to be not going to uh, uh, affect the way that the mm. journal folds. Okay, so I've changed my mind on something already. You know when I said we'll work dark to light? Yeah. No, I think we're going to work light to dark. Light to dark. Okay, so I'm not going to bother with any gesso because I don't think we're going to need it with this one. So I'm going to get the peach. And I've got a paintbrush and I've got a pot with some water already prepared just there out of camera shot. Could you pop that back on the cork for me, Dad, so I don't I stab myself in the elbow? Some accidents. What do they say? Accidents speak louder than words. <laughs> right, so that's going to be the peachy colour, so we'll just grab some of that, and then we're going to start 
just dragging the paint down the page. Again, in those kind of straight lines. This is going to be a weird page, this one, I can tell you. There's no focal point for this one. No focal point on the page. The actual pattern is going to be the focal point. Okay, then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and then do it again. Run out of paint. Shake it to wake it. A little more. Yep. Yeah. And that's because the paint has binders in them and when they've been sat for a while they separate from the so, binder. Yeah. So if you don't shake your paints you end up with a, like a, a clearish kind of oozy liquid that comes out which is not nice which is the the binder let's go a bit further with that peachy color i think that's probably going to give us a nice kind of even actually no i'm looking at it i'm thinking i want more i want more not being greedy or anything Okay, I think maybe the fabric, yeah, let's take them clips off because they're getting in the way. Off you go, there we go. So, they were just holding the page down a bit. I think that green tape or the green fabric is just, maybe just a bit too prominent. We could do with having just a bit of the green showing through. More, more, more. You know when they say less is more? Well, you're covering a lot of green. I am. But don't forget we've got the green paint to add later as well. Mm. Okay, now I'm happy. So, let's grab some babby wipes and then we'll just get rid of that paint and then just grab me a sheet of the kitchen towel please hey i've got an assistant I have my uses. Hey, hey, hey. okay so what i forgot to do was get a bin right <laughs> i'll just quickly now then which way around are we going so that was that was July, so 90 degrees, it's that way, isn't it? Yeah. Quick dry off, and then we'll be right back. Instant. Almost. Don't take long. Okay, so tickets, yep, we'll need those. All right. Okay, so the background is dry. Still just a little bit warm from the heat, the heat gun. So let's come back and look at, uh, just grab a pencil, just the one there, or a pen, that'll do, just a pen. Yeah, this is reaching over. So we can already tick off the fact that we've used sage in the, um, the fabric and a bit of peach in the background and we've now got the fabric down as well so we're ticking off the bits as we're going along so tickets we've got to use as well so what I've done is I've gone into my ephemera collection and I've pulled out this little sheet of old bus tickets or railway tickets um, Caledonian Railway look it says on it there's no date on them but I reckon these are around about 1930 mm. Remember some later on than that. Yeah. Well, you, when we lived in Hull, you still got a ticket on the station what, steam train. What like this? Yeah, the, the green one. And that was when? 
what kind of year do you reckon? Well, 50s, 60s. Really? Yeah, uh... Right, okay. So it could possibly be then as late as the, the 50s. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out this green one because sage colour. Sage colour, yeah. yeah. So we'll just quickly whip round that one. Not being totally precise. So we've got that ticket. Now if you've got the Tim Holtz ticket stamp, you could use those as well if you wanted to. I mean, you can make them whatever colour you like. So we've got that one. Now also, there's that one there. So Edinburgh to Leith or the Caledonian Glasgow to, or Edinburgh to Glasgow Central. Kind of peachy colour, isn't it? Yes, no, no. So let's use that one. That one's a bit too pinky, I think. So let's just have that one. And we'll just quickly whip around that one too. Now this one's got a tear in it, which is where the clippy, the clippy. Yeah, would have punched it so that they knew, but it kind of invalidates the ticket then, doesn't it, for the next, so it well, can't be used again. Oh. Yeah? Yeah, I can't remember the process, but you used to get a return. Yeah. It got clipped. Well, they, they, even now, once, twice. if you got on the on, on the train, they, they carry like a, a hole punch, don't hole they? Punch, like you know. that. Yeah, and exactly. what they do is they go, and then they know it's, yeah, been, used. it's been used. So you can't use the ticket again. In fact, if you look at that one, you can see there's a couple of holes punched in there. Mm. And you see? Yeah. So that kind of makes it look a bit more authentic, doesn't it? Right, so we'll just distress that a little bit. Just grab my distressing and we'll just go around the edge just to hide those raw whites so we've got that one and we've got that one so we've got two tickets there so we can put those kind of in the background like that so I think they will go on now then I've got some spirit glue so we'll add a little bit of that so these have been printed double-sided for use in collage and stuff so these were leftovers from previous projects but we always keep them because you never know when you're gonna need them so we'll put that one there glue that one down and then, there we go. So this is the first time you've ever sat in on one of my projects, isn't it? It is. And you look completely baffled. I am indeed. <laughs> <laughs> You're more of a practical maker, aren't you? Yeah. So you, you do, you make things, <laughs> don't you? I like, make things, and if I haven't got a tool for something, I invent one. Yes. So you do um, you mostly either wood or like wood leather or work, isn't it? Wood, leather. So if you've ever seen any of my steampunk costumes and if I've got any leather work on me, Dad's made it. So, right, so that is fine. Now then, what we're going to need to do is kind of knock that back a bit as well. So what we need to do is I'll just quickly clean off that brush. And then... Dry it a little bit and then get some more of that. Excuse the noise, he said, knocking things over. All right, so I'll pick up some of that paint and then we'll go and just knock it back into the background a little bit so it's not quite so prominent. Dad's looking at me so to say, What? <laughs> what are you doing that for? Okay, so that now becomes, instead of it being in the foreground, it's, not yeah, in the background. it's now pushed back into the background, but who knows those tickets are there? We do. We do, yeah. And who are we pleasing? Ourselves. Exactly. Yeah, there you go, you see. 
the principle, the basic principle about journaling. You only have to please yourself. And you know something's there, even if somebody else doesn't. And that's the key. Like a big secret. It is, absolutely. <laughs> right, let's get that dried off. We're all dry. So that's the tickets. We're sorted, we're done. Okay, so lines. We'll do the lines and the border last. And then we'll add some lettering in once we've got our pattern in there. Right, so we're going to do, pattern-wise, one of the simplest and easiest ones, we're going to do circles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got a variety of different sized bits that I can draw circles with. You could use a compass. I think there is one in there somewhere in my pen pot. Just I can see the green at the end. There we go. So I've got a compass that I could put a pen actually. It might be even easier just to do it that way. Just to show that it can be done. So you grab a compass, put the point on, screw down. This was one of those compasses we've got in one of them really, really cheap. Yeah. children's back to school kits <laughs> and I've had this about 10 years and I think I've used it twice <laughs> if I've used it twice I'll be surprised actually yeah. right so what we'll do is I'll just see didn't push down hard enough I'm still trying to find an old brass one that we used to use at school what you used to use at school yeah right all made out of brass so where would that be that's why I don't use it, because the screw's too... Yeah, there you go, you see. I can go in the bin later. Right, so let's do what we're going to do originally. Right, so put a, a lid from a... This is from a tin of deodorant. Um, in case anybody's interested. So those in the UK. Brut. Oh, Brut. Oh, good old. Yes, good, good old. old. So we've got one there. So we'll do another large one there. Well, not a large one, but we'll do a medium sized one there. And then we'll do another medium one there. Remember, do things in odd numbers. So we've got three, and then I've got a smaller one. Now this is one of the milk caps from the Tim Holtz, which I purchased a pack um, I purchased a pack and never used, so I threw most of them away, but kept some. So these are look, chocolate milk, pasteurised milk, whipping cream, sweet milk, green spot, orange juice. But how many people can remember the old milk bottles? Well, possibly, who knows, but I've still got a few left. So I'm just going to use one of those and I'm going to do overlapping circle. So a different size, and then we'll do over, no, let's do up there, because it doesn't matter what size you use, because you've only got yourself to please. Okay, so three of those, and then I've got the big one the big one which will overlap over there just go around the inside and then we'll go there and then we'll go there again I'm trying to work in threes so there's a almost like a symmetry to it Mm. There's a pattern without there being a pattern because you've got three large, three medium, and three small. Three small yeah. You could, if you wanted to, bring something in even smaller like that, and then one, two, three. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a small brush 
and we're going to start filling in those circles. Ew, you see that? I got a bleg that jumped out. So this is probably going to take a while. So we'll do green there. So the trick to doing circles, I've got it on my fingers. I must have it on my hand somewhere because I've got it there on the edge. Did you see? I'll paint over that later. So the trick to doing circles is keep turning. Now, we can cheat a bit. Well, we've overlapped. And we'll just fill that one in. <gasps> Somebody's making a drink downstairs, I can hear it. Circle number one. So what we'll do is I will carry on painting these circles, because this is going to take a little bit of a while. And what I'll do is I'll put it on fast forward and then we'll join you when we're just about ready to move on to the next stage. So you're ready to work really fast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is either sat there fascinated or just bemused? <laughs> So that's the first layer of green. So what we'll do now is we'll bring that plum colour out and we'll do the same thing again and start colouring in. That should do it, I think. Some of the other circles. So once again, I'll play some music and then we'll whiz through it. Not dizzy yet. Things were working so fast. Or <laughs> well, you're wondering whether or not you should go down and make a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm still recording, no? I am still recording this, yeah. And I see this plum colour is more translucent. Can you see? You can see the lines underneath. Yeah. So we may have to do more than one coat. Right, so that's the plum colour. So what I'm going to do, because 
I want to still use, I've still got some more circles to do. I'm going to just grab that plum there and I'm going to add some white to it. Mainly because the white paint is a bit more opaque than the plum. Plus it's going to give us a paler shade but still within that same um, tone group, if you like, it's just a different value of the same colour. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Do you get me? I do indeed. So what we can do is we can then, so where things overlap, like there, I can maybe just touch in and it just separates it slightly. And I can add in that colour there and then And then we'll just do maybe that side. I think I've got maybe a bit too much paint on the brush. All right, so what we can also do, I'm gonna leave that there for a minute and I'm gonna do the same thing for the green, for the sage. So we'll put a bit of the sage down and a bit of the white. I can hear conversations downstairs. Can you hear them? That's Mum and Ian downstairs. And I think Mum's getting hungry. <laughs> so I think Ian's had to raid the cupboard to get some, get the snack out for her. Imagine she's had some toast for her breakfast this morning, though, hasn't she? Yes. She's not so good today, is she? No. The breathing wise. Right, so we've got a different colour there. So what I'm going to do is I will go in there. See, it's lighter now, so it's going to stand out a bit more. And then maybe do... I'm not going to do too many in these different colours. But it's just nice to see like different shades of the same colour. Bristles on the brush are all standing up I think on that bit. Not quite as fluid as it should be. Now where else should we do in that colour? Should we do this one? Not that side. Oh I think my tummy's starting to rumble as well as yours. Sorry? Is your tummy starting to rumble now? Uh, no not too bad really. Did you have any breakfast this morning? Half a slice. Half a slice of toast, that's more. I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> right, okay. Okie dokie, so we've got to that stage. So what I want to do is I want to clean this bit up. So I think we're done really with that. So clean this bit up and then we'll be back. Take two. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are just talking about filming and editing, weren't we? And we were saying about using the using clapperboards and things. Clapperboard, yeah. Right, so I've got the peach colour and I'm going to add some of the white. I've cleaned the brush. So we're now going to get an even lighter pastel peach colour. So we've now got the darker colours and we've got all those lighter colours too. So out of those three main colours, you've now got six. Yeah. So you see how it's still complementary or complementing the others. I'm not getting too hung up about staying within the lines. You'll see why in a minute. Um, but we can now go around. So out of one shade of paint, you get different values mm. by adding white. Or black. Yeah. So a tone is when you add white and a shade is when you add black. Yeah. Yeah. It stands to reason, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Shade, shadow. Shade, shadow. Yeah. Okay. That's the way to remember it. It's a shade Right, so once again, because this is going to take a while, we will 
put some more music back on and I'll join with you when I'm ready to move on to the next step. But we're nearly there. Right, so that will do for now, for that. Uh, yeah, I'll clean it up in a minute. Um, so what I need to do is just get that dried off and then we'll be back for the next bit. Right, that lot is now dry. So let's just have a quick look at what we've got. Um, so we've got circular patterns there now so what we're left with is lettering border and lines well the lines I'm going to um, put the pen in there so this, that's it so it's the food a ball pen says that oh, fudge. Oh. a fudge ball fudge <laughs> excellent mm -hmm. right so this is a, a permanent pen once it's dry mm -hmm. okay so what I'm going to try and do is just accentuate now some of those black lines around the circles. Like that. Yeah. So because lines are part of the pattern, we can just go around mm. at our leisure. choose I'm a bit scrappy there but never mind so they don't always have to be perfect do they because like we said before when you got yourself to please so it just kind of makes them pop yeah. a bit more down doesn't it, it does, yeah. it's a lot, looks a lot better and you don't have to do them all in one go, you can just... go around, as I'm knocking paint over again. So again, what I'll do, because I'm going to go around all the rest of these, and it's going to be a bit boring to see somebody drawing circles, we'll jump into fast forward again. More music. Okay, I think that is all the circles done now, isn't it? So that's kind of made them pop a little bit. So, so we've got lines there now. And we've also got borders around the circles. But just to kind of make it a bit more, we'll add a border later on when we're ready to finish. So it says lettering. So we need to write something in here now. So what do you think we ought to write? No idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not used to this. No, you're not. That's fine. So what we'll do, we'll actually put the date in then. 
Yeah. Yeah. Dirt. So that's that's the right way up there. So inside this circle here, I'm going to write very 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 carefully. I'm going to put August. Because this is August's challenge, isn't it? So make the date part of the actual process. Mm. So keep smiling in these troubled times. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be a bit too much. Yeah, of course it would be. Yeah. So <laughs> what date is it today? It's the seventh today, isn't it? Yeah. So let's put the date in there as well then. So let's make the actual date. There, so 7th of August, and then in this one, I'll put my name, and just so I can remember that you were sat with me, I'll put your name in as well. So that's a permanent then reminder that you were sat with me when I made the page. There you go. An experience for me. Mm. So fine, so we've got the letter in there now. So we just need to add the border now. So what we'll do is I'll just put my fingers in there and then I'm going to just do a frame border all the way around the page. See how I'm wiggling it as I'm going. And I'm just running my finger down the edge of the page as well. Just, yeah. just so I get the same kind of finish all the way around. And then what you can do just to kind of give it a little bit more bit more detail it's just had a little bit of doodling trying not to smudge mm -mm, maybe get another one in there so we try and do two so you also make it part of the pattern if you like just to finish off. There you go. So, lines, letters, borders, fabric tickets. And that's it, I think we're done. So we've got, let me say, tickets in there. We've got fabric in there. We've got borders. We have now. Plus you've also got borders around the circles. Yeah. yeah. So you've got lettering. So we've incorporated the date and the fact that we're both in there into the art journal page and we've got lines. Again, you've made your line part of the border. So, and we've used all three colours. So I would say that that's mission accomplished. Wouldn't you? I would indeed. We've not missed anything out, have we? No. Uh, cool. So there you go. So that's my art journal page for August's Mission Inspiration, incorporating all of those prompts. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create that art journal page. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from us for now. Bye. Yes, we'll see you all later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I've not even started yet and you've got the giggles. Deep breath.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.